Yeah, hello and welcome back to Conworks. So Conworks Day 2 continues and it is my great pleasure to having three guests, not one, not two, this time three guests uh, over here. And um, yeah, welcome to, let's, let's say, to the Trax team. So to, uh, from my left, it's Tony, it's Mike and it's uh, Nick over there. But I'm seeing at least these Trax shirts uh, there. Yeah, everybody is proudly wearing. So before we start with the topic of, uh, for today with 1837 Saxonia, what, what is Trax? What, what is Trax? Well, let's see, Trax uh, is a little company that we put together to house a little rail con here in Denver a couple of years ago. It started almost on a dare as um, we'd been bemoaning the fact that cons had come and gone in the Denver area. And one of our friends had said, you know, we should just do that. Why don't you just do that, Tony? Um, and at that point, the idea of creating the company, us for doing it, um, came into being. Uh, a couple of us said we wanted a, a little LLC company to put it within. And about two weeks later, Trax was born and we had a schedule set up for our first rail game convention. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, we've expanded into other things that we'll talk about as uh, our talk continues here. Yeah, uh, but uh, this is interesting that, that at first you thought, well, let's form this small company to do a convention, which is wonderful, of course. But then there, is, uh, there was this idea for a magazine, for a game in the magazine and all this. Can you expand on this? Yeah, I can show it off even. We have the uh, collector's edition of uh, Mainline Magazine came in this week. We've been uh, spending the morning stuffing the, uh, the collector's editions with the six games that come inside of it. Very excited. We should get these out in the mail, hopefully this coming week. And uh, we're just waiting on the regular editions to come in, but uh, very excited. This is edition number one. Wonderful. This is a great work. So not only one game, not one game, but six games in included. Six and in the collector's edition and four in the regular edition. Yes. This, is, this is, of course, uh, great stuff. And this magazine was kickstarted successfully by uh, you guys and um, it will now and, and I'm really sorry that I'm disturbing you on your main no. day where you're doing have to do this uh, work here but it will now send out to all backers can people who missed the Kickstarter for one or one or the other reason can they still get it or is it completely sold out at this point well, um, the real block in that is we're we're not really set up as an online store or anything, and so we don't, really don't have a mechanism to sell them. We made some extras that we're going to give away at our conventions and things like that, you know. So okay. come to a Trax convention, you can certainly get one there. Um, but we don't have any we don't have a storefront to be selling them currently. Yeah. Door, door presents. Door prices. Yes, very, very good. And he has in the chat there's Andre, and he's saying hi, Tony. So probably he knows you from from uh, uh, from over an 18xx board. So his name is Andre. It could be, but you maybe know him under Havy, H A E W W I. So, but yeah, but he's a wonderful person. Tony is a wonderful person. So this is great. But this is. Trex magazine, mainline magazine, it's not a one-time wonder. So you wanted to do it once and then say, we, we did it, done. So you plan to do this on a regular basis? Sure. We, our, our, our initial idea was to, uh, to do uh, maybe two a year. Uh, we've gotten extra busy doing other projects like 18 India and uh, 1837 Saxonia. So we may dial it back to one a year. We'll still, we're still working through that. Okay. Yeah. But we already have our plans for the next one. Right. The, the historical, each magazine is going to be around a historical subject and has historical artic, um, articles and photographs in it. And this one's the Hiawathas mm -hmm. from the, the Midwest of the United States. Mm -hmm. And we already know the next edition will be about the Union Pacific. We're planning to start that work in January. And we've already reached out to the UP Railroad to get those connections going. You know, Because on this magazine, the Milwaukee Road Historical Association partnered with us to provide this historical content. 
This is wonderful. So that makes sense. So, so this is, in my opinion, is a great uh, idea and a, a great touch. So, but you already hinted it's not up. Oh, Nick, it's Nick, uh, Nick's idea. So yeah, wonderful, uh, Nick. Um, but you already hinted that you are busy with other projects. So 18 India. So this is a game you are or you designed for GMT. It's currently available via their pre-order site correct yeah um it's um it's a reimagining of some very unique mechanics from francis tresham's 1829 mainline mm -hmm. and um which uh, you know ha since all those games were like made in his kitchen you know 1829 mainline is not widely available and when you can get it it's very expensive um, but it does have some very unique mechanics and uh, those, but, but some of those mechanics don't sit right with the three of us because they introduce some random features and stuff. And, you know, we like non-random elements of our, in our 18xx games. And so we, we reimagined some of those things and put them together in a different way that we hope honors Tresham's really neat mechanics, but in a, just in a different packaging. And yeah, it's, it's, it's already made the cut on P500 and uh, yeah. hopefully uh, it'll be getting in the pipeline shortly here. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, and, and everybody who's interested in 18xx games should uh, look for this game at the GMT page. You can still pre-order it and the, I've heard that, it's, uh, that there is a certain German small company who is looking into doing uh, a, a German edition of it. It's not clear at this moment. There are there are some hurdles to cross still, but at least definitely there is uh, some interest uh, here from Spielworks. Um, well, uh, so, what an honor it would be, Uli. Uh, yeah, it, it would be wonderful to do this uh, game in a in a small German edition. I I'm all for it. Hopefully, it it uh, will work out. And then uh, this tiny German company, Spielworks. Um, I talked. I think. Two years ago, so definitely before the pandemic, I met Wolfram Janich, the designer of many 18xx games. And I'm a fan of 18xx games, so I said, well, why is Spielworks not doing one of your games? Uh, because I'm interested. So um, we, we uh, had an agreement on a game, and uh, as usual, first I need to work on the games that are very high on my list, that needs need to be published real soon. And when I revisited 1837 Saxonia, which is the current title of uh, this game, I noticed, yes, I'm an 18xx player, but I'm not an expert uh, here. So development will not be too good if I'm doing it, and it will take forever. So that's why I asked these wonderful gentlemen if they could um, if they couldn't step in. So that is the current arrangement. And so far from my side, I think it works out very well. So what I'm seeing, what you are doing is, is uh, really great, uh, great uh, stuff. And maybe now we talk about what are you doing with 1837 Saxonia? What, what are you doing with the game? At this, uh, and, and what is 1837 Saxonia? So only very tiny, small questions yeah. here in the room. We were definitely excited when you asked us about the project, right? Because, like, the opportunity to think of the word tracks next to the word Spielworks and next to the word Marflow was was a really great honor. So we're completely excited to be working on this project with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, 1837 Saxonia is, um, as you mentioned, a Marflow game that was, uh, I think um, Wolfram put that out in 2003. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and they're all, you know, again, you know, handmade in his kitchen, I assume. Right. And, uh, you know, as a labor of love. And so there's not a lot of them out there. So I'm really excited to see the game get a wider distribution through Spielworks. And um, but yeah, so that actually presented a little bit of a challenge for us because we had to, like, find a copy of 18 SX. <laughs> mm -hmm. And rather than just order one from Germany and stuff like that, we had two of our friends have copies, so we borrowed their copies, and that's how we got, um, you know, began to understand what the game in its original state was like, and, you know, playing it and, and all those things, and try to figure out um, 
what kind of opportunities for for development might exist in the game you know mm-hmm. yeah um, we have oh, sorry no 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 but please go on yeah. no we we've, we've iterated ar- around our group right since the game was originally um put out there um so many years ago perhaps 18xx sensibilities have evolved a little bit mm-hmm. in the intervening decade or so um and you know we certainly bring our own preferences and sensibilities there are three of us here so we don't always agree on everything and that's a great thing uh, because that means only strong ideas survive usually Um, but um, so there there's an updating there's an iteration process on this there is a back and forth with yourself and Wolfram uh, which is also very productive so we're making sure that the game stays true to Wolfram's vision uh, of what he wants that game to be. And we're just pr- providing, we're kibitzing, we're bouncing ideas, proposing new things, asking questions. Mm-hmm. So that's the way we viewed this process. It's sure. been lovely so far. Yeah. One of the one of the things that we felt is that in its original form, 18SX, um, there was a lot of Chrome in the rules that added some complexity, but didn't really add to the decision space. Mm-hmm. You know, um, for example, there were two different rules for laying different kinds of track and there were two different kinds, you know, all, all these kinds of things. And, um, you know, the core of the game is, and of all 18XX games is, you know, you want to, as a player, worry about making your, managing your investments, managing your companies and their trains and building the track and, and doing all those things. And um, so we wanted to unencumber players from some of the more mechanical type of things that were going on. So working with you and working with Wolfram, um, I think we've made amazing process or progress rather on streamlining some of those things, right? And putting the player a little closer to the actual game and not have to worry about the, the small little rules and things like that. And um, yeah, I, I think that where the game is today is in a state where you can think about those things that as a player you want to think about. Why we play the game. I want to make hard decisions about my trains, my companies, yes. my investments, not about how to lay this track. And at the same time, I believe that what Mike said is also true that, um, you know, working with Wolfram, we've maintained like his his vision. Like the game is still the game, right? And all the cool things that made Saxonia unique are still in there. Mm-hmm. And, and which features made uh, Saxonia unique, if I uh, ask you very bluntly? So, so why is this a special game? So, or, or let's do it in a slightly <clears throat> different uh, way. Because why did I, a non-18xx player, non-expert player, so casual 18xx player, why did I choose to pick up that game? So, because I'm very interested in the um, in the special terrain in Saxonia in this time, because it's so hilly, you have several rivers there, and so that makes it, uh, in in my opinion, um, special. But also, as you hinted on, this war is originally a 2003 design, so quite a few things were really, really uh, complex. But according to you three. What makes the game special? What is special? I, I mean, I, 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 the terrain is something that is, is important for all of us, right? Because of what that does mechanically in the game. Uh, for example, there's no straight track. Every, everything's curved. However, if you do need straight track, you have to build a viaduct. Mm-hmm. And this, this we think is a very unique aspect. Um, Number one, the, the tiles have the little viaduct drawn on them. They look gorgeous. Yes. Um, and building a viaduct is more costly, as you could imagine, than building um, a, a regular piece of track on the ground. So the terrain and the cost for building and the fact that you can't build straight track unless it's a viaduct creates really an operational puzzle for the players, right? It's, it's actually fun. We enjoy trying to figure out how I get from here to here in as straight a line as possible because we're running hex, hex trains, trains. That, yeah. that's the it's the, right. it's, the tr- it's the hex trains yes it's the it's the judgment that you're making between do i build a straight route that's super costly or a windy route that's much cheaper yes mm. it's 
it's a, it's a beautiful puzzle to solve. Mm-hmm. You know, with the with the track, you you're you're having to lay somewhat serpentine routes, which you know hex trains want want to go. You can only run you know four hexes, five at whatever it is, right? So you want to be as as linear as you can, but the game won't let you do that. So you have to really just puzzle out. Not, mm-hmm. At least not cheap. Not cheaply. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is one of the um, really great features uh, of the game. And um, another thing is, of course, most um, 18xx games, the minimum player count is three, three to whatever. So where is 1837 Saxonia here? Where are we in player count? It's, um, it's two to six. The original SX was three to seven, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, sometimes there's only two of us available or one of us with a friend to do playtesting, and so uh, Wolfram has created some two-player rules based on 18DO's two-player rules, but with you know changes, of course, for Saxonia, and um, it works really well. There's a non-player, uh, there's like an NPC for all you role players out there, right? A non-player character that will do investing and run a company and you know, kind of be that third player, but the players can control some of his actions. And so uh, it works out. It gives a good experience. And the way Wolfram has it right now is there's a small map for two or three players and a big map for three to six players. So if you have three, you can play a smaller, quicker game or a, or a bigger, longer game, you know, and that, that works great. Yeah, this is pretty much, uh, it, it's not unique, but it's rarely seen in 18xx games that the game plays well with two. And um, we now will have a backprinted game board. So on one side, it's the uh, two to three player um, board. On the other side, it's for more players. So I think this is a good solu- solution. And unfortunately, if you are, haven't uh, switched on Twitch at this moment, you can't see this, but you have already seen this. I want to show the viewers here, the, uh, some of the art in the game. So, um, of course, this is just, um, it's not finished, So, but you see here some of the trains done by the always amazing Harald Lieske. So you see they will be done in this style here. So in my opinion, it's really looking very well. And I'm showing you the draft box cover and here you still see that it says three to seven because this was one of the changes amendments that tracks it so and and they said well it works with two to six we can do this so i'm really really glad that uh, this uh, could have been uh, done and yeah i like it i like this artwork um, a lot so back here and we are getting some confirmation from Andre saying awesome artwork um, nice. uh, so that that's uh, good to know and um, Alex um, no, sorry uh, Nick had a good question here but I think we already covered this he's uh, asking how does 1837 Saxonia differ from 1837 SX so I think we, we basically covered this or do you want to return to this um, yeah I, I think that you'll find um... Saxonia to be a more streamlined, um, less complicated, but not less interesting, right? Like we want to change your focus to the interesting parts. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So, but all the, you know, the viaducts and the things that, you you know, the the secondary railways, Mm -hmm. the minor companies, the conversion of minor companies into the KSS, like all those things still exist in Saxonia. Because those those are the things that, that's the heart of Saxonia, and to go back to the terrain and the and the track laying, like one of the, you know, we think great mechanics in the game that Wolfram has are the build points. Yes. Your companies get build points to mm-hmm. build track, and you get you get a certain number of free build points depending if you're a big company or a little company, um, and then if you go over that, you can go over to a, to a small degree. Um, it's somewhat exploitable. It'll cost you money from your treasury. So you can build track a little more aggressively, but it's going to cost you money that you won't have for trains or, or different yes. things like that. You know, so um, so the build points is one of our favorite mechanics in there that, that builds on top of and, and adds to the track puzzle. And mm-hmm. I think to directly answer that a little bit too, the 
if you've played, if he's played SX before, one of the big things you'll notice that's missing are the two different gauges of track. Yes. That's, mm -hmm. that's no longer part of the game. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. I, I think I, th this is a very valuable uh, change that, that streamlines the game without um, taking away a lot from the beauty of the, of the game design. So I think this is a smart decision. And we have two more comments here in the chat. So first, uh, Tamar Lion is saying, yay, more 18xx games in Germany. So yes, right. And hopefully, as I said, uh, 18 uh, India as well. And Chris is having a question. Were there considerations to look at the dragons from 1856 Sardinia for the two-player uh, rules. Uh, did you think about this? Um, no, and I'm very familiar with Sardinia, and the dragons are very cool. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we we didn't write the two player rules, right? Those came from Wolfram's brain, and uh, and they're working very well. Yeah. So you know, there's I don't know. As developers, we don't feel like um, there's a reason yet at this point to go talking about that further about changing those, and you know, we just We'll keep playing them and keep refining them. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is the the best option at this moment, and uh, we'll see how this uh, develops. Um, anything else that you would like to to mention at this point about the yeah. development? I just, you know, some of our, what our goals were, right, when we took on this project, right, and we, you know, the overarching goal is to not ask Wolfram and you to change 37 Saxonia so much that it's no longer what it, you know, it had those, those great mechanics in it, but um, to work on other aspects of the game that we could, you know, help you guys come up with a, an enjoyable game that still has interesting decisions, that has an operational focus. It's not really a stock market game like 1830, right? It's not yes. about that's not 1817, right? It's an operational game. We all, look, I love a good cutthroat game, but what do we all love? We all love to run good companies. <laughs> you know? yes. So, you know, so an operational focus. And then, although we did have a company change hands last, last night. night. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> um, and then, we, in the process of the streamlining, we the gameplay can be, the goal is for it to be not too long. For example, last night we played a four-player game in three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. So you know we you know this is this is good. Yes, exactly. You yeah. Know, so yeah. So something that's not too long, um, enjoyable, interesting, fun, and still maintains the spirit of what eighteen yes. XX was. Mm -hmm. So really, really uh, good, uh, and I'm now looking forward to, to this. And I can cannot thank you enough for, for you all your work uh, you did here. As I said, if I had done this, wouldn't be that good and would take forever. So I'm I'm really thankful, and I'm also thankful to, that you are available today and on your mailing uh, day. So this is really wonderful that you are making available some time. But uh, because of another question by Nick, I would go back briefly to 18 India. And because Nick is asking what will be the difference between 18 India and 1853? That's easy. They're oh, both what? in India. That's Everything else is different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so there's, there's no connection at all between the, these uh, two games. Uh, did GMT, by the way, have... Um, because it made a cut at P500 at their pre-order uh, system, uh, do they have any tentative release date for for that game? Uh, not at this time, but um, Chris, we know that things are happening. Uh, you know, like the artwork is starting to progress and stuff like that. So it's in the pipeline, but yeah, you know, right now. It's yeah, difficult. There's... It's very difficult exactly. to predict exactly. what is happening with shipping, with production, with everything. Yeah. Uh, I would I would direct your your viewers, Uli, that if they want to know a little bit more about 18 India, Tony has written a series of articles that GMT is releasing on their website as inside GMT articles. There are two that are published at this moment, and I believe there are what, one or two more to come. Three more. Three more to come. Uh, and those go into much greater detail about what our thought processes and our development goals were um, during the development of the game. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. And that one is also a, a very fine two-player game. Yes. Mm-hmm. Great. Yes. This is also great to know. Yeah. Yeah. And I put it at least, and this is not the website, of course, that I put in the chat, but this is Inside GMT. That's a series of articles for all their games. And, and if you check out the GMT website, which I think is just gmtgames.com, you will find the section for Inside GMT. And then when you're there, you will find 18 India, you will find these uh, articles. So please check out that game. Check out mainline magazine i think mainline is the name uh, of the uh, magazine yes, yeah it, it's right now um, you may be a little bit late maybe you are able to to get a copy at a convention uh, but check it out for, uh, when there are future um, issues of the game and of course if you are interested in it please also check out 1837 saxonia developed in a very good um, way by these three gentlemen of tracks and good luck with all everything you're doing with with uh, tracks, and um, I'm really grateful for for your work here. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank and you. to all viewers, of course, thank you for your time as well. So, bye bye. But before I'm, I'm always forgetting uh, stuff. Um, I'm continuing here at uh, 7:15 um, CET, which is in 18 minutes. So, if you are interested in it, please watch the next episode of Conworks Day 2. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. I'll see you soon. Bye.